We are down a man this week, but David is here. Matt uh, couldn't make it, and uh, you know we'll hope to have him back next week, of course. That's why we got three guys. We're just next man up. We're just rotating in like a good defensive line. And, uh, you know, here we go. High school updates. I think it's, you know, best to start this with a few guys that are making noise both on the field, but also guys that we, you know, kind of already liked, guys that we've talked about. I think at the top of the show, definitely worth bringing up JKS or Jaron Kiwi Sagapolutele, I believe is about close. Um, this QB, who obviously David is in on because he's originally from Hawaii. I think he still is in Hawaii. I don't think he's transferred out. Uh, committed to Cal, but having a really good season so far in Hawaii. So we love Hawaiian quarterbacks. Tell us a little bit more about what's going on with um, JKS here, David. And and uh, I do know he had a good offer, a, a new big time offer recently. Yeah, he picked up an offer from Oregon, who is, seems to be pursuing him relatively aggressively. Achilles Smith Jr. is having sort of a, a wonky senior season. Uh, statistically, he's just not doing very well. And so they're kind of looking to add another another guy into the mix. Um, I watched that. I watched most of the game. I didn't stay up for the full game because it was so late. Um, but I did watch like the first two and a half quarters. Yeah. Against, Are we talking like, a, yeah. like 1, 1 a.m. Eastern kickoff? Yeah. Uh, it kicked off at um, like 10, 30, 11, my time, I think it was. Mountain time. Oh, man. Yeah, mountain time. So, yeah, I didn't stay up for the full thing. Went to bed around like, you know, 12, 31-ish or whatever. So um, he had, let's see, 350 yards, six touchdowns, one interception against Mililani, which is one of the top schools in Hawaii. They're the 45th. Uh, ranked defense nationally according to the Massey ratings. Um, he he looked good. He played well, live arm, the whole thing. He was accurate. Um, he likes to make he likes to make throws out outside the pocket, inside the pocket, like sneaky mobility and like some twitch to some twitch to him. Like he's he can really get around. But like I think the knock on his profile is probably that he doesn't have any rushing touchdowns at this point. No, he's at 169 rushing yards, which is fine. 6.8 yards per carry, pretty good efficiency. So, like I said, he's not a he's not a total statue or anything. Uh, it would be nice to see him get some. I think a big indicator is usually like 10 rushing touchdowns is is, is like solid for a fantasy upside. But regardless, super efficient passer right now, and he did well in his toughest matchup. Yeah, um, you know, and you gotta like. Uh, his, I think he's got listed a, a sub four, eight, uh, 40 time. He's over 200 pounds. We like that, you know, lack of data in our database probably tamps down his star index. But, you know, if we had some burst, if we had a, a good power number, some agility for him, he could jump up right now. His star index is 58.6, but the ball velocity is there. 56, uh, certainly good enough. And so, you know, he's a bit of a mystery man, you know, because I think that potentially if there was showing, so, you know, if he's got some twitch, he's got some burst, some agility that we could plug in there. You know, that star index may go up to, to a number that we'd be really excited about and getting power five you know, premium power five offer from Oregon. Definitely an interesting QB. Um, and he runs enough. He runs enough. He's not a zero. Um, I think his motion's a little long, but I can overlook that if everything else, uh, you know, looks pretty good. Um, he's certainly an interesting guy, definitely qualifies in my mind as a riser during this senior season that he's having. All right. Then we got Kamario Taylor. Um, you know, a guy we want to like, we've talked a little bit about the accuracy is he's so raw as a passer, but an electric athlete. What did he do? He he's been, uh, you know, he's been earning people money if they're betting on his high school games, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, he's, He's been covering spreads left and left and right here. They've been uh, 24 point underdogs according to the Massey model in three out of their five games, and they have been covering. Like so, the results have been good, but mostly it's because of it is his ground game. He's been uh, he has 103 rushing yards per game. Um, he's one of the top fantasy points per game. Uh, let's see, he's got 33 fantasy points per game. That's ranked sixth out of every, I think, 24. 
24-7 composite player that has a max preps stat profile filled out. At least, I think it's at least two games in our database. What David's talking about is uh, our big database of all the stats of all high school players, which you can imagine is huge. Um, to qualify, I've got to have a 24-7 composite entry in 24-7 sports and also at least two games of stats and max prep. So of those players, he's like top top six in the nation or something. Yeah, so super high. And that's one stat that we kind of look towards with quarterback. Quarterback stats, is it's it's difficult, but like 33 fantasy points per game is definitely encouraging. Um, I did watch like most of that game um, against Louisville. They did win that game. They were expected to lose that game, but he was 11 for 28 for 160 yards. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's weird. Like, his teammates, it just seems everything's kind of – the whole passing game just seems out of sorts to me, but he definitely isn't accurate. I think they made that pretty clear at the Elite 11 yeah. that his accuracy is just – when he can, like, really let it rip downfield, he's, like – pretty pretty accurate i feel like but like touch stuff and, and all that it's a little questionable so i don't know what to do with them because like these are the guys i i generally like the way i play c2c usually is i usually go for the freaks and, and hopefully hopefully they hit because they have such high fantasy upside but i th i would say like he's probably the one of the like, i do think he's a freak and i think if he doesn't hit at quarterback or like he just can't improve his accuracy. I do think he's athletic enough to potentially transition to like a wide receiver or tight end. Like I think he's that athletic. So, and I, I don't, wouldn't say that about like 99% of these dudes. So you can see with like Eli Stowers, or I think he's on Vanderbilt now. Like yeah. he's gonna, he's going to be really high in the model. He's got a, like a 40 inch vertical and like a sub four, six. So like, that this is a, one of those types of guys that could do that. So that's like sort of like a plan B type thing. So I don't know. I'm sort of lost. I just want him to complete more passes, but <laughs> I'm not, I don't know. I wasn't very encouraged after watching that full game. Yeah. I mean, I think the play here is, and this is how I would do it. You know, I'm not going to reach for a guy like this, but if he's sitting around, these drafts usually get thin pretty quick where, you know, the top guys go. And after that, you're just hoping for college fantasy upside and NFL is just cherry on top think that's where he falls. Um, and, you know, even if NFL is not in his future, maybe he goes to Mississippi State in the beginning, transfers down to G5 and lights it up like Kadon Salzer is doing, uh, you know, at Liberty or something like that because, you know, that's the kind of guy and he can just go absolutely bonkers. We're looking at Army guys, Navy guys this year, just putting up 30-plus points a game. So the running component can't be overlooked. You just may not have an NFL future unless something really changes. Um uh, real quick, we got Bryce Baker doing some some big time things. Uh, 155 QBR. Uh, he's a guy that I believe Matt brought to our attention midsummer uh, as a guy who who could rise. And he's an UNC commit. Really, just having a great senior season, and I think pretty good on the star index as well. Um, you know, certainly a guy that we can get on board with. Middle of the road of star index. I mean, I'm looking at 68.5 here. QB velocity is 54. A little lower than you'd like, but just putting up great numbers. And UNC, though, I really don't know the futures for that program right now. They're they're looking rough. Uh, so we'll see what that offense looks like. Everything about that. And then finally, for quarterbacks here, Alex Mansky, I think kind of a, a C two C, you know, official favorite sleeper pick, uh, guy who's just putting up work. David, what what's Mansky doing out in uh, middle of Iowa? Is what it is, or is it? Is it Iowa? Yeah, I think he's in Iowa. Okay. Um, yeah, we talked about him, I think, the last update. And this is just another – just saying he's continuing to do really well. Um, his team is 6-0. I looked at, at – um, I looked at their start – all their starts in the Max Preps era. So going back to 2004, 2005. So this is the only 6-0 start they've ever had. So the team is performing historically well mostly you would think because of him um because he, he has 16 passing touchdowns eight rushing touchdowns like i said it's good to get the double digit rushing touchdown and zero interceptions so he's you know been very efficient dominating bad competition um but i don't know I, what do you think about iowa state it's like a kind of a mediocre landing spot i feel like but it's not bad uh, you know 
mediocre. I mean, I feel a little, I mean, I, I don't know about quarterback production. I know that they've been able to sustain one or two receivers from time to time. And certainly running backs have come through there that are good for fantasy. Can't really remember a great quarterback, even Rocco back. I mean, he's doing okay this year. He's supporting Jaden Higgins as a pretty good startable wide receiver. And, but you know, otherwise I don't know if they just, I don't, I don't think the passing volume overall, I think it's enough to support one receiver, you know, their wide receiver one usually. Now, if you get a stud QB who's really worth it, maybe you pass more. I'm not sure. Um, you know, Alex Mansky, just as a reminder, five sport phenom. I think he's got golf in there. Is that right? And then um, 84 star index. We like that. But some of his other stuff that we would normally look at burst, um, vertical jump, some of his weightlifting stats and ball velocity is typically below what we would like to see. He's getting bumped up there because of the five sport. Uh, you know, thing that he's got. So interesting player though. And, you know, he's not a guy who's going to spend a lot of money on. I just like flagging these players for myself because eventually after the the no brainer guys that everybody knows about, you know, when you're Kamario Taylor, Alex Mansky, these are late in drafts, just pick those guys up rather than anybody else, you know, like flag them. Not like you have to sell the farm to get these guys, but flag those guys instead of any of the rest of like the hundreds of QBs that are available, you know, at least flag the certain guys to prioritize and you're not spending tremendous draft capital. Um, so that's where Mansky is. So those are QBs. And then uh, just because Matt put so much work into it, I wanted to show <clears throat> this list of the QBs fantasy points per game, which is pretty amazing that, you know, we've converted their actual stats into fantasy points. Uh, these are guys with 24 seven composite uh, ranking and at least two games of stats and max preps. Uh, David, you had a little nugget you said earlier today on Jack Moran. He's from the same high school as a current uh, a four-star re recruit, 2024 freshman, I guess. Yeah, so he was he's at the same school that Miles O'Neill was at. Um, he's just dwarfing his Miles O'Neill's numbers from from last year at the at, it's the Hunt School, I believe, in New Jersey. They actually had another. Um, I think high three star, maybe a low four star um, quarterback that I think went to Iowa. I don't know. They just get these big burly quarterbacks. This this guy's <laughs> also like six four, two twenty five. Kind of a it's just another statue guy. Um, but I don't know. His efficiency is like off the charts. You see, he's getting forty fantasy points per game um, all through the air. Really, it's not. He's not going to do much running. So. That's just bonkers. But yeah, I don't know. That could be a not a great sign for Miles O'Neill if you just, I don't know. Production is squirrely, I say, but like the fact that he's kind of dwarfing O'Neill's numbers at this in the same like basically the same situation makes me a little, a little nervous about that. Yeah, and just highlighting a couple of these other interesting players. Number five, Steel Pizella, who's got a hundred rushing yards a game. About. Um, Going to Washington State, he's like 5'11", so definitely a smaller dude, but uh, probably a jitterbug out there. I haven't really looked at his tape. Uh, Ennio Yapour, uncommitted, but he is a three-star out of Miami, 5'11", 225, so very interesting body for for that guy. Uh, 93 rush yards a game. So some of these guys are putting up you know, big-time numbers on the ground. And so, uh, but yeah, thanks to Matt for – you know, scraping all this data and giving us fantasy points per game for high school. Uh, it does help, I think, contextualize some of these guys and their upside. But, you know, David's been beating the drum for Keelan Russell. I don't think I've come all the way around on him, but like he's crushing it as well. in you know, I think pretty good Alabama um, competition down there. So that's the quarterbacks. Uh, I think we'll cut it here for show number one. Uh, like and subscribe to this video if you like what we do here on the official and be sure and look later in the week for the rest of the running backs, receivers, and tight ends.